Press fit? Mm -hmm. Good morning. Get better. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the uh, Monday, September 11th Committee of the Whole and Administration and Op Operations meeting. Um, the second item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to our agenda? Hearing none. People want to, oh, do I need, do I need approval of that agenda? Yes, so I need to move for the agenda moved by Councilor Smith, seconded by Councilor Rourke. Um, discussion, none. All in favor? Okay, disclosure of pecuniary interest or conflict of interest and the general nature thereof. Does anyone have any disclosures to make? I have a conflict of interest, Mr. Mayor, on 12B. I'll be removing myself. Paperwork's filled in. Okay. And it's over to the clerk. I also have a conflict of interest on 12B. I have filed out the paperwork for 12B. I will be, um, the Deputy Mayor and I will both be vacating uh, the room and we will need um, the chair. So does anyone volunteer? I love it. Okay, Councillor Ward will, will take over the chair and <laughs> Deputy Mayor will excuse ourselves um, after a, so uh, to the clerk, just for clarity, we go into closed session. We are all in to closed session on an item A. We will come out of closed session so the public sees the deputy mayor and I exit and then go back in or Jerry, you declare it now. So we technically don't have to. If you prefer to be open transparent yes. so that you walk in the middle of the room yes. and you'll read it, then Mary would go into open session again and then revert back to closed session. Yeah, I think I think if uh, if it's the will, I think. Everyone's okay with that. I prefer that that method to come out and go back in. Okay. All right. So two disclosures noted. Uh, all right. So business arising. Uh, does anyone have any business arising from the uh, previous meeting, the whole meeting minutes? Going, going, gone. Moving on to delegations and presentations and. I will welcome um, from the South Nation Conservation Authority, Rhonda. Um, Bouts. <laughs> I was going to tangle with it, but I wasn't sure. Uh, Carl Vickerdeck, welcome, Carl. And uh, Councillor, uh, I don't, are you you're part of the presentation, Deb, or not? Well, we'll recognize you later, mm -hmm. Councillor Deb Wilson of Chemical Board of South Nation Conservation Welcome, Deb. Welcome, welcome aboard. All right, so typically, Rhonda, we try to keep it to 10 minutes or uh, less for presentation if you need a few extra minutes. And uh, by all means, I'm sure the, the committee will, will do that. And then um, hopefully you'll entertain some questions um, at the end if the committee has some. Perfect. Well, fire away. Thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, it saves me as that. Um, <laughs> So I'm probably the next CA on the South Nation Conservation. Uh, and again, thank you to Deb Wilson. Deb is one of our two uh, board members representing the municipality of Lee Forever. Um, in this area, this at the county level, you operate on a rotational basis. So uh, there are two representatives from Lee Forever. Uh, Deb is one, and Deb is married to one, and so uh, I've got that is the other. Um, so just so that you know that we've got a local representative you can call on if you have specific questions about what needs to be posted. Or things that have been addressed there, or you want to, you know, move something to the table on behalf of your municipality or the county in general. Uh, that's the this is your one of your representatives, and my dog also. Um, so we're here tonight uh, today because the province changed the uh, conservation authority act in 2021, and we've been dealing with the uh, the, the changes uh, to that act since then, and a lot of them come into place next year as well as before. Um, sometimes when you know you're not in the pile of something new, you've got to figure out what's going to accomplish that. And that's what we're trying to do. It's great to come and come to council and uh and, and remind everyone of the programs um and go through some of the bureaucratic steps that we've been asked to do by the province, which is namely request an agreement for services that we've been providing throughout the world uh throughout your municipality for the last uh 75 years. 
Uh, so we have an agreement in place uh, to provide that uh, if we're going to use any of our municipal levy to, uh, to provide those services. So we'd like to talk to you about a bit about what those services are that require the agreement and, and explain that piece. So the province uh, breaks it into category uh, one, two, and three programs. Category one programs are um, our core mandate, um, hazard prevention, flood prevention, uh, flood mapping, and so on. Our category two programs are fire agreements with the municipal partners. So, for example, our SEPTIC program, which we provide on this municipality. And category three is uh, the other services we provide. Thank you, Carl. So I'm just going to take a few minutes just to recap the programs and services that are affected by this change and what we need to do and on. We look at these programs and services starting January 1st, 2024. So they're basically our land stewardship uh, programs, our education and outreach, and our conservation land procurement. So conservation of land themselves are considered poor, but the actual acquisition of the lands is considered a category three of the parts of the I'm just going to take a few slides to walk through some of these programs and services for anyone that may not be familiar. So we have a very robust tree planting program. We planted approximately four million trees since the program started in 20, uh, sorry, 1990. And we were planting on average 75,000 seedlings a year. But we did see a dramatic increase in the demand around 2020. And those numbers have stayed high. So we're now planting in excess of 100,000 seedlings per year. Now, the program is supported through Forest Ontario's 50 million tree program. It provides subsidies to landlords for tree planting projects. We also have the Golden Counter Sales Program, which will take care of the smaller sites that don't qualify for the 50 million tree program. And also, we've been partnering for the last number of years with other municipalities in the spring as part of our forest conservation initiative to provide free seedlings during our free seed days, uh, seedling days. So, those are some of the ways to get seedlings in the ground. Um, and again, uh, Forest Ontario is a major funding partner. Um, however, their cost, though, their um, funding doesn't cover all of the costs. So we've made a few changes over the last year. We have a few certain kinds of fees to become more cost recoverable. But the reality is, is to provide a full service tree planting program, there is a small portion of levy required to support that staffing, that to do the site business, to do all the coordinating, to hire the contractors, to see the program, to do the site business, to treat the ground. So that's where the municipal levy dollars go, is to support the tree planting efforts. Uh, the next program we touched on is the Clean Water Program. Um, this is a long-standing program that has been around for 30 years. It provides grants for landowners that do water quality and best management practices. Uh, we provided the, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my hand. Uh, the graph, sorry, on your, uh, this new slide, is a breakdown of what we provided as far as grants is uh, the program we launched in 1993. You'll see that a majority of the projects are in the industry management category. Uh, we also have grants for shoreline protection, property practices, and well and septic. Uh, we take a look at the, all of the projects that have been completed in that time. It's about a $15 million investment. And just a reminder, that's money back into the local economy. When our land is in the new projects, they're buying materials and services locally from the communities and from local. Uh, service providers. So that is a reinvestment in the local economy. Um, and uh, the next program is our habitat restoration. Uh, this one is uh, restoration projects on public land. So in eastern Ontario, about 80% of the properties are privately owned. So if we were only to focus our efforts on the conservation of early homes, we wouldn't be able to have an impact on the watershed scale. So it's very important that we work with private landowners to help empower them to do restoration and habitat improvements on their own problems. Now we do this primarily through external funding sources. So our staff are very good at finding grants, helping landowners through the process, and actually securing money to do work on private lands. The graph notes some of our returns over the last five years. So you'll see that we have successfully secured more than half a million dollars to complete projects on private land with private landowners. And they include things like wetland restoration, grasslands, uh, and tree planting buffer projects. Uh, the municipal levy that goes into this program, it's used as leveraging. So it's basically the staff time it takes for us to be able to fill up grant applications. And when funding is secured to help a landowner through the process to get into the project, and then doing all the reporting that comes along with that. So the restoration piece is possible because we're able to leverage 
municipal plan that we have, we want to convert your dollars to more than double uh, as you can see the graph that we had put into the program over the last five years. Um, the other piece is uh, education and outreach. So our education programs are dealing on a platform for every basis. Uh, but we occasionally use bits of money in order to draw and get those grants uh, to, to provide those services that are in color. Uh, um, we also provide uh, approximately $10,000 per year in community environmental grants. Uh, those, those grants help community groups with new projects like tree planting, uh, river and park cleanups, uh, fishing derbies, river races, community gardens, pollinator initiatives, uh, youth education, and other types. So, I think for a broad range of uh, programs and money, for instance. I just know that you may be familiar with the uh, fish camp that we were able to add to the current location a few years ago. That's an example of where uh, the staff finds some part of the municipal dollars for uh, coordinating with those festivals. Yes. Um, the last piece of the uh, conservation land security. So we've been extremely successful in, in securing uh, forested land and environmentally sensitive land over the last uh, few years. But we've been able to turn those levy amounts, the uh, what was previously a special level for forest land acquisition, um, we've been able to turn that into approximately three or sometimes four uh, times as much as funding or reporting federal funds. Um, and also, we're able to leverage it to, to do what we call split receipts. So, we'll work with landowners who want to donate part of their property and, and sell part of their property to come up with a, a tax effective way to, to do so. Um, so we're able to put those uh, dollars to the use of these people who are talking to the lot of the policy. Um, we've been securing conservation lands since the 50s. It originally started because of erosion. Uh, more recently, to be with water quality and deforestation concerns in the general public. Um, we, we find this one of the best values of uh, ways that we can uh, conserve the uh, environment. Like I said, the soil and water resources are really important, and trees are a great help in security. Uh, so just to recap again, the category three is private hands search and outreach. And again, municipal dollars are really supporting that staff and university case to coordinate, to seek external funding, to implement projects and then do the necessary reporting um, to the grant bodies. It also includes grants for the Clean Water Program and Community Environmental Grants. And it's about a 3.88% of the total municipal levy that we receive. Uh, which is about 173,000. So that's for all of our municipalities. And for the private, uh, for the conservation land procurement, again, it's the actual procurement is the piece of category three. So the funding that comes in supports the purchase, but also supports any ancillary costs like labor or survey. Uh, it's about 8.12 percent of total municipal levy, so approximately. Three thousand three hundred and sixty-two thousand for twenty twenty-four. Um, again, these are not new programs and services. We're not here to ask for increased funding or to add new programs. We basically need to sign an agreement to allow us to continue delivering these programs and services as of January first. So the budget you see before you uh, is still an estimate because again, we don't have a budget correction put by the board. So the actual dollar amounts will vary slightly because we have our um, draft budget. But the, first, the second call again the municipal levy apportionment, that's the 2023 numbers. 2024, we just received a very, very similar. So the breakdown will be very close to what it was in the past. You'll see that for the 62,000 approximately that Edward Ricardo pays the total levy, about 7,500 of that would be directly to the category of new programs. So we would just be taking that small piece of pie and using it for the program we just talked about. And again, the next step is we just need to solidify it in the agreement. So we have provided the staff to the draft agreement for understanding we'll probably come for council later this month. Uh, it's uh, one agreement for all 16 municipalities. We wanted to reflect the watershed approach. We also wanted to minimize administrative straight burden down the road instead of having to make consistent separate agreements, it's much nicer to be able to pack it all in one. Uh, again, that agreement sets the maximum 12% we need to talk about for category three funding. There are a few requirements in the agreement that the province dictates that so there must be a five year review. There must be a clause for cancellation or amendments to the agreement. 
And uh, what we're proposing is a five year term with an automatic renewal for another five years if all parties are satisfied with that five year increase. So that basically sums up the agreement which we're coming to work council later this month. And that concludes our summary. We're happy to take any questions. Thank you from the department. Um, I will open to to the committee for questions. Open for hands. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. I see under your education there which is a ten thousand dollar a year community environment environmental grants. Yes. Uh, our next uh, uh, piece of business up on our agenda is the Cardinal Canal cleanup. Would that be something we could look at? Yes, so we agree the uh, grants are $300 each is the maximum funding. Uh, the municipalities can apply, they have in the past. So basically, it's a letter uh, summarizing what the money would be used for. And then uh, it typically, right now, goes to our communications committee. Uh, next year, we will be reverting that to staff level approval just to speed things up. But it sounds like it could be eligible. And uh, I can pass it along to your clerk for me. For uh, the application, maximum three hundred dollars. Maximum three hundred dollars. And on the same token, uh, education outreach, we had the uh, fish and dairy two years in a row. Great success. I love it. I never miss it. I have smiles when my kids start catching little fish, and and well set up by you people of educating them of of, of the fish, the type of fish that's in the river, and so on. So a job well done on that. I have to think. Uh, Mr. Hunter, who was our counselor, who, who brought that forward, he's on our committee. Um, it's a great, great opportunity. I hope we can continue a partnership with you on that. So thank you again. It's actually our only campus in the first Yes, addition. Pardon? It's our only campus on the St. Lawrence River. Yeah. So it's a nice addition for us. Good. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And continue your good work. Councilor Smith, did you make a second? Yes, thank you, Lucas. Uh, I just got a couple questions. Uh, I'm not sure whether I heard it correctly. You say you have contractors to plant the trees? For the yes. Seasons? Yes. So we have about 100,000 plus trees that need to grow on the ground. So we've done as many as 25,000 in house, and it's not a good job for staff that are not tree planters. <laughs> where are their beds for the seedlings? Where do you plant them? I'm sorry? Where's the bed for the seedlings? The seedlings, where do you plant them? Uh, so they're all kind of planted. So people are basically coming to us looking for opportunities to plant. So there is a uh, uh, 1,000 minimum in order to qualify for the you know, tree program. That allows us to have a contractor come in and plant for the landowner. Anything less than 1,000 trees, we deal with over the counter. So the landowners can purchase subsidized trees, they need to plant them themselves at that time. Okay, thank you. I got one more question to go online. I was just going to ask that. I'm about to ask staff to be my first one. I don't know what the question is. It's something to do with my height, I think. Uh, our mass is probably 700 a day, something we're not even 800 per day. So, uh, 100,000 is a big undertaking in a small uh, window in the spring. And then fall. Absolutely. Uh, the other question I have for you is the clean water program. Are you people who are Look out for the St. Lawrence River side, or does that look is that look out for the coast Um, uh, so clean water grants. So our grants are eligible to anyone within the jurisdiction. The only thing we don't fund right along the St. Lawrence River shoreline is the ocean grants. So it's just because if we start looking it up, we will be funding with applications and really the projects that are coming in um have a smaller benefit because of the scale of the river versus Projects that are on our smaller tributaries and municipal drains to be removed from the watershed. So, anyone within that is required to apply for any of our grants. The only exception is erosion along the St. Lawrence River. Tributaries in the St. Lawrence River would qualify, but not main tributaries. Do you think we have a specific example, Council Snow? I'm sorry? Were you thinking of a specific uh, project example? Or, uh, well, I like, was thinking along the St. Lawrence River in Cardinal. Like, uh, do we have to have permission to you people to put? Oh, for as part of regulations, yes. So it is part of the area that we can regulate. So there may be requirements for permits if you're doing work on the floor in the water case. So there is levels of permits. So it may be one, but you may also require an NRF or possibly a partner to stream motion. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I think this is your question. Just one quick question. Your community grants, is there a window where they open and close, or are they like an ongoing thing? Uh, it's ongoing until all funding is allocated. So um, 
In your still some funding left, we typically are fully allocated by all of the members, uh, but there's probably still a little bit left, and we approve them throughout the year. When does the cycle start over again? Um, basically, if we start January 1st, because we have our budget through the year, then we know we have an operating budget. We can start to make applications at that time. Thank you. No questions at all. I'm just saying, I said, well done. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I, I hate being a guy sometimes, but so, uh, I, I, you know, you, you guys do great work, and, and, and I'm not trying to dissuade or belittle that, but I do worry about signing a five year, a five year contract, for instance, um, and, 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 you know, how we fit in in a, in a place where we're at 1.39% and City of Ottawa is 76.7 or 76.8%. You know, how do we fit in, in, in that big fish world as far as, Making sure that we can get our the service that, that we well, you know it's a great question. Um, and you know, you know the city of Ottawa in all the hours and they're the same as the council when we were to uh a rack. Uh, but they you know put in more than they get back in general. It's it's not a case of them taking uh too much. They're you know kind of as a uh, as a in our case uh had lots of these past and the bigger value they're actually down to the this past. They, they see that bigger picture as being part of the watershed approach. Uh, and they're, they're fine with that. Our board members who are from the city of Ottawa councils, they, they understand that they, they put in more of these grants and they actually uh, get back in their areas fast. Um, so I'm too proud of that project. I know that allays the concern about you know the allocation. I think most of our smaller rural municipalities get a, a good share from, from the top. Uh, in terms of the five-year agreement, um, you know, it, although we're happy to come down to council and then move through the steps and move the agreement to the council, um, it is an administrative burden that we will open to make lines um, by having that five-year term and then five-year year and we'll as long as no major concerns are there. Um, and the reality is we've been operating this way for decades. Now we have to split out these programs and put them in the place. Had the act not changed, this would have been part of our monthly funding, and you would have seen that small 4% come out separately as a category. So we're not proposing to change really anything other than to have to now sign an agreement to continue doing what we're doing. Um, so what we can do too, and we were doing this before the pandemic, we kind of got off track of it. We do try and meet with our municipal partners, you know, once a year to be able to provide an update of what programs and services um, benefited, from, benefited from each year. And we just got away from that process over the, uh, the pandemic, but it's something we would like to bring back. So we were doing stats by municipalities so we can provide that information to, um, to staff and council. So that's always a possibility for us to provide that information if um, we ever see the numbers. Okay. And, and and there's one last question actually, and, and I think you probably answered it to me already. But uh, so so as far as the makeup goes of, of, of the SNC board, for instance, if we don't change the perspective, then we still, I think it's every year or something like that, we rotate around. Uh, so it's not a four year term. So for these, you know, it's four years. This four years is Augusta and Orlando. In the next four year term, we refer part of the so there's a rotation that we set up and we need to uh, buy those calories back for the nomination not the action. So it's been at the council level. We've got it's actually a nice model. We've been moving uh encouraging some of the other things uh, to kind of look at that approach of very Okay, great. I think that's that's just what we've done. Yep. I don't really have many questions. I just think as Rhonda said that when I was on the board of come on and uh, to me it was basically just creating more work for, for the Foundation Conservation and with just more red tape that was put in place because it's been working for decades and, and there was no problem with it. And the big thing that bothered me is councils don't approve this and enter into agreement you can lose all these funds because they can't fund it unless they have the agreement with it. So I think it's imperative on the councils to sign the agreement with, with them. And it's with the, the program that's involved here, I don't think a one year term works because a lot of them are, are spread. They're planning, I know when I know them, they're planning things four years ahead that's going to take place. If they haven't got an agreement, they can't do that. So I think it's a uh, 
you know, you've heard of who the council that have come on board. So your levy's not changing anything. It's just, I guess, it's being more transparent where your money's actually going. But as long as all the council had, had good representatives on there, I think I got back every year to you and told you what, what, what it was. That's the thing. Uh, and I think South Nation's always been pretty good with the board members we've had here. I think I've heard it. Report from Western Ontario that that was maybe where it started, but they were just transparent and then they weren't mm -hmm. pointing down there and watching where there's, there's forthcoming information. And I think that's where, where I said to me, Carol, was wrong, but I think that's where, where the government brought in that now they have to, the board members have to be a minimum of 75% have to be elected councillors that are, are board members before. There's probably eighty percent of them which is the point is we weren't even on council. Now they have to be elected representatives. So it's pretty transparent now. Anyone else? Second one. Okay. All right. So um uh so just for clarity, and I know it's been said about a hundred times already, but just for my own notes, it's not a new twelve percent. That twelve percent is is out of the original hundred. Right. Yeah. We're basically looking at how much we typically spent uh, in past years of our levy on those programs, and we're uh, bringing that number to you for approval as uh, for good measure. Good. Thanks, Carl. Um, and I think you know, just in in my role as mayor, um, the things that I have. Heard, you know, both through the last term with Councillor Hunter and with uh, our many builders and people that work with South, South Nation is that you are an impediment to to them. You're actually quite a help. So uh, where we hear across the province that sometimes that's not the case uh, from almost anyone that I've talked to, South Nation doesn't. It actually seems to remove some of the barriers and helps a lot with with getting things done versus not getting things done. So yeah. So thanks for. For all that you do, and thanks for coming uh, coming to see us tonight. And we'll see this on the twenty. Yeah. Oh, we're going to put them. We'll actually make a decision. Yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to six, which is consent agenda. There are no items. I'll look to the clerk. There's no items on the consent agenda, correct? So up for discussion, uh, which is 7A, Councillor Martel, I believe you brought uh, this one forward. I would assume you'll lead the initial discussion on the Cardinal Canal cleanup. Are you this discussion? Or is it through the mayor, I think everyone at the table knows that, that when I ran on my election platform, items was to, to clean up a little bit along the East Canal. I was hit on the East Canal. Going to, I, I, I would say the portion of the canal is there. So, basically, where the cardinal sign is? Yes. Yes. So, we're talking about from the old stone pedestal. East. Right. When you say calling it stone pedestal, train support. <laughs> I think we, as long as we all know that. And as long as the members know the area that you're speaking. Everybody, everybody knows what we're talking about. Yeah. So the intention would would be to kind of clean up that area, clean up around the, the pedestal and the first little section of canal there, and put up some street lights, some benches, just kind of make it a usable area with the intention of encouraging making that section of the canal a useful area. You know, maybe there's some rope stuff in there, some fishing stuff, some skate stuff. Make it kind of a touristy destination spot. Um, I met with the uh, CAO on site there and we kind of went over the, the thought of what we were going to do. 
which brought us to uh, this cool study that was done in 2007. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, through the uh, through, through the chair, we can look me up at the skateboard and just got less than in 2007. So, uh, yeah, next steps would include confirming and defining their focus timeline for completion, single year or multi year obtaining costs on updating bank stabilization study or a portion there of the agency that may play a role. Beyond that, I guess it's open for discussion. You're done discussing? I'm done. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, I'll weigh in, I guess. I mean, uh, as long as that's okay, I think I'm good to go. Right? Not breaking Robert's, but okay. So, um, Certainly in support of, of cleaning up this area. I know um, we helped out with a community group a couple of years ago. We pulled shopping carts out of the water. We, you know, it's become a, a place where there are needles, where there, you know, there is drug paraphernalia there. Uh, with all of the undergrowth, it certainly um, has turned into um, an area for for bad congregating versus versus good and for versus tourism we've um you know i think staff has done a fantastic job getting getting the area to where they can run the mower along and keep keep the grass nice and there's a ton of people who walk it from from bridge street all the way down to the staircase continue along the pathway and then end up going right down dundas right right to where the cut is and, and the canal uh, and it gets utilized as a walking trail uh, a, a lot. Um, but that area around the Cardinal sign, um, and I can see you know, what you have for docking and for pop-ups. I'm not exactly sure um, you know, what the end, end game is, but when it comes to just a general good cleanup to, to get it back to um, you know, the stones and, and a beginning, I'm certainly, yeah, I'm certainly supportive of getting that back to you know, what it should be now versus what it is. So when we look at the, the diagram with the pop-up and the, the gazebo and the docking, that was sort of my artist running with the idea, which is very indicative of this whole project. There's a good appetite and there's, there's people that are ready to step on board that are unwilling. I guess this artist actually sent me a message yesterday, I want to know if there's anything else you can do before the meeting is. There's a hunger for that to make this a, yeah. like you say, thing used a lot now to make it. And I don't want to uh, give the impression that it's, you know, a place with like, the needles. So there's a lot of good action happening down there, too. There's a lot of fishing, there's a lot of people walking the trails, just enjoying the natural wildlife. So I think the intention would be to manicure this area in you know, uh, page 52. To do the to keep the area down to the little S where the last street light would be manicured and clean and keep the rest of the trail just as a nature trail the way it is now. I don't think there is any appetite at all to climb up on the stones and, and deal with any of that. We're not talking about moving the stones, rebuilding the stones, cleaning the stones. We just want to make this area a, a little more aesthetically pleasing and useful. But, uh, Pedestal could be like the, the focal point, which is beautiful. That could be a place where people stop, you know, let's take some pictures by the old canal thing. There are a couple of, uh, of items. There's one gentleman, I'm sure you've heard this too, that has the original turning thing for the, the old bridge that is willing to donate it to the municipality. You know, we could put some displays like that along there, some cultural things some historical things, some artsy things. It fits in super well with what's happening in the rest of the township with the mural and the, you know, the historical vibe there and the artsy vibe there. It's just kind of, it expands UC as a, a cultural destination. I would look at this as, I don't want to go in and get, you know, 15 million and go crazy and I wanted to, I envision this being a small piece at a time, starting with you know, cleaning up this area, 
trying to get it into use. We're, we're building infrastructure, but more importantly, we're trying to build a community here where we get people engaged, we get businesses engaged saying, hey, yeah, I'd love to build, you know, uh, to sponsor a street sign and, uh, and the picnic table and put my logo on it. We want this, you know, a microcosm of the community. Yeah, you got me talking. See, I get you going. <laughs> Um, I have one one other question to uh, to staff and to the CEO. So um, recently we we saw a couple of um, force mandates, uh, mainly at the end of uh, Walker Walter Street, and then most recently the parking lot by the um, by the mall. Um, did that force main continue along the top of the rocks all the way down to Gilson? Yes, it, it, it would actually uh, start at the top of uh, um, Bridge Street and then go on the top of that. Yeah, and it would be top of the top of the corner of the So, okay. And, and there's no worries with, uh, with the trees or with the vegetation that is, I mean, since that forest wing was, was put there, the, the vegetation certainly changed. There's a lot more tree areas along the top of the rocks. and. Um, you know, looking back at the historical pictures, there was none of that. Is that it's not an issue, is it? Well, we did it in there. I think that's where I'm, I, I, I would kind of recommend before we do it too much you know, to, to at least look at uh, doing a, a portion of that stabilization study since it was 2007. It's a better idea of. Uh, Sort of where where those stones stand now, or they can they come back and in, 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 in case there's you know no no further sort of deterioration, which which is good. But considering that we we have had a, at least one portion of break in the long term block, I think it would really be before you know, we have to consider moving forward to, to attract more people down in that area. But, from a due diligence perspective, it would be pretty worthwhile to that the location could be at least the scope study in that particular area. Yeah. Can I follow up on that thing, uh, Mr. CEO? So you are you talking about to, to not to go back to the to the engineers report, but to real to go back and do boreholes and lab testing? Should we do that um, before we carry on any further to see if it's changed from 207 or 223? Is that? I, 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 would, I would think it would be worthwhile to at least reach out to Caller, who would complete that stabilization study and sort of get an idea of uh, you know, magnitude of cost to we'll call it update, uh, you know, scope portion and what that would include. I think it would. Uh, I think it would be appropriate. Uh, I think it would be appropriate. Um, yeah. And uh, Councillor uh, Martel, you're saying you don't want to do anything with the rocks, like on the north side. The intention was not to Just do anything with the stone. It was more to the stone on the north side or both. Either side. Okay. I would see that as turning into an incredibly expensive project that's mm -hmm. going to end up with another spot for another mall. Well, on page 47 kind of puts it in uh, in a nutshell when you look at your options. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. Yeah, and that's... To do anything there, so... That's an old one. I mean, that's... I think, yeah, yeah, and that's an old one. So, yeah, I mean, I'm all in. I, I, love, I love the attitude. Um, I, I love your... Page 52 and 53. I agree with the CEO though. Before we look further, we're going to have to see what the engineers think of it or if anything's changed since 207. And it's a good opportunity to see if there's any heritage grants out there for this project. So that'll be hopefully where the money would come from was the heritage program. Heritage grants are out there. You want to have through the mayor if I could and say also if we're we're doing that study, are we considering just doing the section that 
we intend to, to use, or would you do the entire canal both sides? So I was thinking the minimum that you experience that you're 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 looking at the future of that you can get improvement on. Um, depending depending on the thought that we would probably be worthwhile to uh, to go look at that in your site. Uh, just to, to, to get a better feel for where where things are either Remain the same, eventually redress and do it. Uh, so the CAA would I mean, the um a lot of the deterioration of the rocks on the north side appear when you're walking along there to be the result of where disconnected storm drain lines are. Is that, is that fair? Uh, for the, yes, Mayor, I would say that uh, both those are certainly what are here in the most areas. Oh, uh, wait, I mean, that's what I'm assuming. Are they ours? Are they in any counties? <laughs> are we walking into all here as well? <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit odd. The, 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 the stones uh, are cert certainly are uh, the municipalities uh, that outlet uh, from the county road or top of the road. Um, yeah. it, it's a little questionable on, on, on whose responsibility that would be. Uh, most likely, it would be the counties to be the county's mm -hmm. outlet. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I would certainly say so. Unlikely that there's any type of uh, form of agreement in place. Well, so I think it's worthwhile noting that when we, you know, I lived at, at Walter Street, um, you know, there's there's deterioration or there was deterioration, you know, at the hill at Walter Street. The township took, you know, uh, notice of that and they've certainly put in cement along the bottom so that the water drains properly and so that it hasn't doesn't result in deterioration on the stones further on, on the south side. Um, if we know that there is deterioration being caused on the north side, is there any way that we can engage with the United Counties to get, you know, maybe at least, I know we're not going to be able to go forward and fix them, but to prevent them from going further? Uh, so I, I, I would certainly say that that would be one of the uh, one of the parties that we would be reaching out to with respect to uh, if we if, if we were to go to a fuller scope with with, with that state of revision study, I, I, I would certainly be uh, optimistic that the county would uh, participate, similar to to uh, them participating back in, in two thousand seven, along with the uh, Along the same way, change but because we have some funding that they want to get to respect to that. I'm not sure if that, if, if that funding will exist again, but I think if we can get an idea of where that, um, where we're sitting with that, then have a further conversation with the, uh, the strong efforts um, through there. Mm -hmm. There. So, when we when we talk about engaging, and this is bear with me for a sec. So so like when we did consultation about water and sewer in Johnstown, right? There was a consideration given to to that discussion. So when we engage in it, we might be told that we have to do it, right? When we engage the the consultants for for water and sewer. Is there is there any implication here that if we do a rock stabilization study and it indicates that we have to do it, are we going to be forced to spend the money to do it? So the mayor, that back in two thousand seven, the, 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 there was a number of options provided with, with respect to the current status, and at that particular time. Basically, the north side was signed, indicating that the canal signs were uh, deemed to be unstable. And as 
that was the remedial action taken at that point. Depending on, in all fairness, depending on what that civilization um, doesn't get turned back, particularly I would say more so, potentially from, from additional action in a major part. And, and no, no I, I suspect that it would, that, that it would primarily be able to uh, improve numbers to the Mr. Mayor, I share your concern on that one. We don't want to be known as a council that wants to make a park and the canal instead of having to close the canal. I don't. Yeah. So that is, that is a risk, and I'm all for safety, but the reality is that sometimes when you hang someone to find if there's something wrong with something, they're going to do their do damage to find something wrong with it. You know, they were newer than that. Mm. Or on page 47, restoration, more than $10 million. Something that would. And that was kind of in 2007. Yeah. So that's like 37 million. Well, I would be in terms of the Yeah, so I mean, page 47, there's not a single one of these numbers that doesn't scare me when they, when they come into to, to where we're at and where we came from with regards to this year's budget. I mean, we, we had lots of roads that we put off out of the last year's budget we're trying to get through this year. And, and you know, at you know, two hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars is about a kilometer and a half of road somewhere up there. Well, but uh, you know, I don't want to be the one to have to tell somebody, "Sorry, your road didn't get repaired again because you, you know, uh, did a little bit of work of stabilizing some of the some of that that tank." So that's my concern for sure on, on that one. Um, you know, and, and I, I share the mayor's uh, thoughts on that or his comment on, you know, if we do this study, what happens is if there's a minimum that has to be done just to get to stabilize it. Not that we shouldn't do it, but again, it'd be something that that. You know, putting putting uh, good money after bad potentially, and and uh, you know, not restoring one of these roads potentially down the road or down pardon me, this this year, right? So, uh, so you know, I'm I'm quite concerned about this is maybe not the uh, uh, the year that I would recommend you know, for going with something on this one here, anyways, unless uh, you know it seems really obvious that there's something definitely wrong that we have to fix. But uh, or you know, like I said, and I, and I love the idea, I love the tarp idea down there. I just I just can't see me. So it's, a, it's something that I get behind for sure. Uh, the way we're talking, the situation that sounds really bad. Is there some reason why we don't have cautions signs or something like this for people not to climb it on and walk it down through there and everything? Like, is, is that make a danger or a threat? I think the, 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 the
I didn't see that time as a big one. Mm -hmm. Or a brother Logan. The picture that I'm looking at right now looks, looks really nice just along uh, the causeway with that. Uh, mm -hmm. but there's no reason you couldn't do something there. I mean, it, it's hideous looking now. You're going to see the sign of the trees that go on mm -hmm. in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this picture looks attractive. We well, walk down there today, right? Yeah. No, easy walk. It doesn't look like a picture. Now, my few years ago, it did look like that without that building that built it. We used to take all the trees out of there. Uh, yes, we did. Um, okay, so we'll wrap on this video up. Um, is it a recommendation? No, it's, a, it's just a discussion item. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor, the, the, the next steps would be if, if there's uh, an interest uh, in from the committee to, to look at doing some sort of uh, follow up with this to the committee and getting some advice if we just have to look at the community and be able to check that as family. You know, start to start to put some talk with us to get the floor of that for some cleanup. In I think you know, listening, didn't hear from either either end of the of the table. I know there's four in the council that certainly supported the I think some form of a stabilization study and and clean up one that doesn't. Um, and and I don't know if Karen spoke or if John wanted to speak, but I I think um, I think it could be very nice. It does really with the with the studies down there. And, but there has to be some way to do something. Uh, but I think I think you're right on the money when you talk about the the historical you know, cleanup and so on because that's that if you could if you could find something for that one that oh, part yeah. of the yeah. you know, and you know it would definitely be worthwhile to do some digging into what grants are available. Um, well, <laughs> I don't see nothing wrong with doing a little more than cleaning up around the sign and cleaning that up. And as far as spending money on, on the study for the stabilization of the stuff, I, I would uh, leave that for your public works department to decide when, when and if there's a, they need a study to. For, for your forced water being going across, they got to worry about something from the half of the river. Don't think they're going to do that. So I don't think they have any qualms about wanting to invite them to start spending money on the study until you actually need it. We started the last council, and this council started cleaning up the waterfront, and we were getting great reviews in the lock and stuff along there. There's still a lot of things in the schedule to be done along. Long there, I think you might better try to finish one project before you start another. So, I think. Were you around for the 2007 study? Were you on the council? Then? I was not on council then. I was involved with the other you know, companies that were able to do the work for the evaluation of the zones and stuff. But there, but uh, not like us. It, uh, but I guess the the cost wise the effect that most people didn't like it wasn't what meant put in the study and there were was the, the removal the sale of the stones was pretty near pay for half the cost of stabilizing the bank of those stones that were portion. And that if you take them out and sell them, there was no value put on what the value of the stones were. They had a price to remove them and stuff, but they didn't, I don't think there's any place in there where they value what these stones are worth when they're 
you're taking out my you know, uh, and these are you can't consider these armor all stones because these are cut stones, they're not glass glass stones. And, and armor all, all stones right now go for about a hundred dollars a ton. Each one of those stones is probably two twenty feet, so that's on the one. Yeah, that's why it was expected in the price of my resistance to cost to take them out. I don't think there's any reason to build it on what they do and if they use the stones to stabilize the bank. What? Good point. You said 300, John? A stone? Mm -hmm. They're not all the same size. One end could be two feet long, or sure. and the other end could be a foot. If you can have a look at them, there's not two stones identical. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's about. Sure. Okay. So, uh, wrapping this up. So, yeah. yeah, yeah final final work. Sure. Make sure there's a mayor to see your office here. Sure. Any possibility that we could have our staff just take a look around the house school and see if there's any, you know, if, if they feel safe cleaning some of that out of there, if we, if we need to start, if we need something. You know, I was down there with a guy that used to operate equipment like that this morning. He seemed to have the impression he had the equipment to, to be able to clean some of that out very safely and efficiently. Talking about the Cassius Nails with Clarica. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would suggest that the next step so we get some cost estimates with respect to the facility is in the back. Um, not, I'm not sure this whole uh, step would be. Uh, Load that is on various departments that are currently designed, and uh, it suggests that we only undertake too much that we just feel better feel like we what what's happening. So we would hear back. All is well. We should be able to have an update by next week. I'm not good with that. So just so to the mayor, just to, to clarify, we are going to do the entire canal or just the section of the talk and note for the decision. And we're just going to start to obtain a higher level estimate for that with of that cost and then that would be so it's the high level estimate of the section we're going to do or the whole canal. It would be for both. There would be an option to see the scope, and there would be an option to. And I do, I do appreciate that what so that study was done in 2007, and um, we can we can look and, and, and indicate that maybe nothing further has deteriorated, but. Um, I'm also a little concerned that you're not going to go to that close to that north and probably uh, is, is appropriate at, you know, at, at 15 years or so after the fact to, to, to get a little better feel for what the situation is. Mm -hmm. it, 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 may there, it, may be, it may be good news. One last one for you there. Would you have any concerns with the canal at the west end of town? Would you? Ask them to look at that. You know, if, if it's a safety, if you've got people walking there now, it's a... and to, to the mayor, I would I can't recall right off if that portion was was completed at the at, at the time of that study in Arbor, but just had focused on the north and six uh, east of uh, east of Bridge Street. So I think if, if that hadn't been completed, I wouldn't necessarily, I think it would take smaller steps in, in particular areas where you may, may be looking to make some improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You got what you need. Thank you. Is there something you want? Okay. Good conversation, all.
Uh, all right, moving on to 7B, which is natural gas expansion program, uh, township submission. Um, who's going to speak? CAO is going to speak to that? Thank you, Brent. I just, just wanted to indicate that we did receive some follow up uh, uh, following the, uh, the email delegation and uh, that uh, the Ministry of Environment has uh, released a uh, discussion composition paper on the future of natural uh, gas expansion and home uh, heating affordability. So um, I thought it was worthwhile to, to, to get this in the public package since it basically they're, they're looking uh, at their feedback from uh, multiple stakeholders and with, the, with, with municipal uh, government and a lot of those uh, uh, stakeholders. And um, I guess with, with respect to at this stage for our committee, I looked at their in particular. Um, Areas that you, you may want uh, to, to, to look at uh, uh, a little further as we look to uh, prepare the uh, submission, which we will uh, return to the committee with that, with that uh, submission prior to the uh, So, before we, uh, we break into any, any discussion, so um, we've made the presentation twice, right? We made it at MOA this, well, maybe even more than that actually, right? Because that's twice this year, I'll say. Uh, we made it at, at Roma, we made, I made it again at, at Nemo. Um, and certainly uh, more positive response, I think, at, at Nemo than, than certainly or maybe follow-up than, than Roma as well. Um, it'll be, when we do this, we will, or I'm assuming we're going to go ahead with an application again in December. Um, they've extended that deadline a little to, to the 13th or 15th or something like that. Yeah. Right? Um, are we, so is the question on this, are, are we wanting to put this same presentation forward? I mean, we have all the background information, right? We've surveyed the residents, we've done the last council, no, um, uh, when and not doors did all of the, that legwork staff put it all together in, in a nice neat package. Are we looking to add something in addition to that, or are we for staff's intention to move for asking us if we want to move that same package forward? Well, I think we're what they're, what they're really looking for is feedback on the natural gas expansion program in the city. The what? Oh, sorry, <laughs> looking for for feedback with respect to the natural gas extension program to date, like the first two phases. Right? If you if you if you recall, <laughs> were we part of that? We, we were we were we, we were not obviously, but uh, I think what I think what it's fair to say is that the programs were oversubscribed at the rate that our um, of projects being approved uh, compared to what the demand is, um, there's not there's not a, a, a good horizon uh, for uh, it's just they can't they, they just they're unable to um, meet that demand. So I think what this really is is. Consultation period to take in revisit at the at the start of the program and entertain uh, um, suggestions and have some improvement with that program moving forward. And and did I mean you're looking for us for that recommendation? Did staff have recommendations sure. to that? So at this stage, you know, because it's December 15th, what I really want is to just get that get the information uh, to the committee, give some thought, and, 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 and find find your word, and staff will do the same over the next uh, over the next several weeks, and uh, we'll look at formulating uh, a response uh, back to the ministry. So. So going going back, and I, and I I mean it's phase three. So obviously we didn't get picked up on phase one or two. Lots of other competing interests did, um, billions of dollars, whatever. We 
we applied what eight times for the water and sewer project before successful getting getting that done for um, is that, uh, I, 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 I don't say that maybe wrong, but yes, I, 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 I would say I would say that I would say that on yeah. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of work has, has, you know, and from my standpoint, and I know staff that time is, you know, valuable and, and I'm not sure exactly, um, how much time staff has to spend on, uh, you know, on, on this, when we already have, you know, that interest put forward, um, they're both, you know, collaboratively with Augusta and, and Prescott, you know, we've made that presentation. I, I think it's, you know, it's a good presentation. Um, like, I don't know if expanding it or changing it's like, is the suggestion that it would make us like somehow get closer to the top or? I would say it would, it, would be, it would be worthwhile getting up and notes to at least provide feedback that the current model with, with phase one and phase two, if you know that phase two, some of those projects will not be started until I believe 2025, 2026 timeframe. Phase three technically hasn't been released. So you could be looking at a time right now of even if we were successful, you know, it could be 2020 or 23rd, right? Is that an acceptable timeline? I, 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 I think it's but I, I think it's feedback with respect to that. If there's some um part of the consideration that we may want to put forward to the to the problem. Right now the, the system well, that program isn't uh, delivering the results of it. Not only on this, but in several municipalities. Right? The high demand with respect to the, from the from the resident perspective, from the, the business perspective, uh, to uh, that has natural purposes. You know, for the, mm -hmm. It's an interesting spot, right? With with the uh, you know with the uh, conversion prompt and a lot of in a lot of cases for you know, yeah. for for a lot of black folks geothermal those other uh, types and there's certainly a, a push on to do that it'd be, it'd be interesting to see by 2030 what what kind of an impact that actually has to you know really the green line expansion so um, okay so so unless anyone has anything else to add or, or wants to discuss it further you're looking to have Further discussion at some point is that the uh, idea to see you back to, to give back for December? Correct. It's basically an introduction to the work that the convention has the, uh, the paper to, to, to review. We'll have another discussion. Another about discussion as well. Right. Likely next month. Yeah. Anyone else you want to go before? Yeah, I, I think it's really important that we get in behind this. And, and I wonder is there any, is it possible? We could get maybe a high school student to do some of this legwork and not our full time staff or bring in, you know, someone in that, that's thinking about maybe getting into municipality and uh, have them do a little legwork. So I think it's very important that we, we send out all letters, to, especially from number two again, all letters to them. Uh, same question as we went door to door. I'm going to fill it out, uh, get a hold of all of our contractors who are saying, yes, we need natural gas and special And this number two highway up. I really do believe that we should really push on this and and not a discussion now, bring it back to your month. I think we should move on. Yeah. And I think not our full-time staff maybe, but I, I just wonder if we can't look at something like that with a student on several envelopes who could Maybe do a little bit of that labor force, take away from the, from the staff. Co op. Yeah, like a co op student. I think we can dig into it. That's my feelings because I think it's very important. They're telling us they want feedback from, we never had this before, like from contractors. You know, 
or anything like that, Gatwick, or any non-government organization. So if we can get farmers behind us who want to open up natural gas on their on their dryers, I think it's uh, worthwhile that we should the co-ops give them there and try to let them do the low bit of the Especially yeah. the, the cost of propane is high. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I was heading for eight or nine thousand dollars in propane expenses this year at the rate that we usually do. But we, uh, we went to one of these heat pump systems, so I a few good for a hundred bucks, something like that. Can you get this? It's can you know, so dryers like that? Yeah, I wonder if they'd be dryers like that, but uh, you know, I know that right? you know, we need to get something out there in front of them for sure. But you know, part of the first statement almost seems like why bother if they're not going to do anything for us, but uh, that's the work that's going to be done. Okay. okay, so further discussion again in the next okay. okay. Uh then we're on to action items, right? Okay, so you're not in there. So um I guess we're looking at um uh, SNC municipal agreement for category three program. So what we uh, what we saw earlier then. So um do we are the movers lists at the table, or do I need to see the mover and start the table? So bear with me until I get to that. All right. So there's a recommendation on the floor. The recommendation reads it's page 73 of 172. Uh, that committee recommend that council enter into a cost apportioning agreement with the South Nation Conservation Authority. It helps me wear my glasses on. Uh, to continue the delivery of Category 3 non-mandatory programs and authorize the mayor and clerk to execute the agreement. Um, so we had a presentation earlier. Um, I think everything is pretty clear. Does anyone have any comments or any questions or any further discussion before I ask for any words? Yeah. Yeah, just, just to follow up. I, had, you know, I was asking for questions because I was concerned about certain things, and I think that uh, I wasn't sure that between Carl and Ron, but that's your sure your answer. And, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the wisdom of, of uh, uh, Mr. Hunter as well, his experience. I, mean, I think that, you know, while, you know, I have a little bit of reservations, I don't think it's enough to, uh, uh, to lock me in anything in this. And so I appreciate your time coming out here and, uh, uh, and and talking through that. And it is just a reallocation. It makes, I see what they're trying to do is unfortunately you're going to have to put a card you know, something out there. You know, it, it will unfortunately, but it's only a small amount. It's not something that's extra by the next council, at least for, for, for your just understanding. But it's uh, it, you know, it's only the first year, anyways, and we all know it's just getting used to being a council at that time. So that's all good. Yeah, we've got two weeks to sort of think about that. Right. Uh, all right. So then, so moved. moved. Thank you. Second. Seconded. Further discussion. Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? All right, so action information item B, unmetered residential properties in Cardinal updates. CAO or Eric? Hold hey, on, just one second. Uh, thanks again, yeah. Carl. Yeah. Nice to see you all. See you. Well, see you. Thanks very much for coming. And we'll have that'll go on to the council agenda at the end, at the, the first, the last Monday of the month, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Safe drive home. All right. Sorry to cut you off. Mr. Long. Through the mayor, I'll be here at Supervisor regarding meter residential classrooms. In 2012, we partnered with 302 Marks to implement a universal lottery meter program in Cardinal for all the program was set. During the universal water metering program, water meter installation costs are covered by the township. Uh, Bylaw 2023-11 outlines current rates and fees includes two categories uh, where water meters were not installed. So category A would be residential properties which do not be metered and don't use or the default plumbing, um, which prevents the inflation of water meters and excess costs and maintenance. And category B are rates um, with users who refuse or are uncooperative uh, to have a water meter installed. I have made up the rules of the table to kind of compare some examples, meter consumption rates versus what the monthly and annual charge would be versus what the annual uh, rate A and annual rate B would be. It kind of gives you an idea on kind of what uh, somebody that's unmetered would be paying compared to somebody that's metered. Um, in 2022, the monthly water consumption was 11.48 uh, 
cubic meters per month and 52 cubic meters per month for commercial. Um, unmetered residential properties would meet the consumable annual an average of about 18.9 cubic meters of water in month to reach category A rates and 47.88 cubic meters of category B. So use of below 18.59 cubic meters would be a cost savings to the system and an extra expense to the customer. Usage above this amount of 18.59 would be a revenue loss for our system and savings to the user. So we came up with three options and potential solutions. One option would be that we just leave category A and B rates the same way they are. Option two, we could increase category A rates. Uh, this option could potentially capture more revenue from unmetered by consumption users and possibly motivate users to have water meters. Or option three, where we could reinspect properties, assess the feasibility of installing water meters in the same location installed. Uh, one policy implication would be that adoption two would require amending water rates from bylaws 2020 to 11. Financial considerations option one would be the easiest, no financial impacts. Option two would increase revenue to the cardinal water sewer system. And option three, I uh, did speak to estimates on a plumbing contractor, which would be approximately $129 per hour for inspection during regular business hours. This would cost approximately $1,548 uh, for 12 properties if in, in, in invoiced individually. Obviously, if multiple inspections could occur within one day, there would be a cost savings on the overall inspection. Um, and then additional charges would be incurred for any installation. Um, our recommendation would be to uh, direct staff to schedule a private contractor to reassess residential properties currently being invoiced under unused rates and cover this expense in the current water system. Uh, thank you, Ms. Wilmer. All right, so uh, I so there is a recommendation. I think uh, it was just read. There's three, there's three, um, three options obviously uh, on there, and I guess maybe we should have have the discussion or see um, see if somebody wants to move a recommendation or something like that. So. Let's go first. Deputy? Yeah, thank you. Uh, do the chair. How many residents right now own a residence that are unincorporated? It more or less in 12? Is that right? Or 15? 12 that are not meters for themselves uh, due to uh, time during the metering program where it's too difficult to install. We do have a set of number of meters that are currently being. Uh, and have errors if we are currently re, uh, resetting these alarms that are not communicating with the meter rates. The actual meters are installed. Right. So is, is it 12 though? We're looking at 12 or 15 max? Uh, max the, uh, the 12 the, uh, of, of the properties that uh, were originally installed. And is are they all like are giving us a hard time? They don't want meters or is there some just too hard to install? No, the ones listed here, uh, I believe, other than one, uh, they were all uh, category A because at the time during the uh, metering program, plumbers uh, indicated that they were too difficult for the location to install without, not just with plumbing, but with setting the contract and removing walls or. Uh, yeah, yeah. Things. Okay. So that's, that's where so the idea is do we want to spend additional money to have these properties reassessed to potentially have more meters installed? Or if we get yep. Fine. Gotcha. Can, can I, uh, is there any? I'll make a motion that we take uh, recommend option three. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Or one second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take your pick. Um, I think the first one I saw was Councilor Martel. Um, okay, so further discussion. Mr. Siegel. Sorry, one thing to clarify with the Deputy Mayor about things like having the refusal. So we can sort of probably consider. I think at the start we had three or four refusals we are now down to well, one. One in category. Uh, so hold on for that then. So we have a mover in a second, right? We're good. Okay. Right. So in, so what happened with those refusals? Did they have meters installed then? No. So the, the, the refusal not where you get the, the category. Sure, just 
Yeah. Right. So, so if at the beginning there were four of them, and now there's only one of them, Correct. and they didn't get meters installed. So, so the three, the, the, the three that went from ten to did have meters. They did. That, that was my my my, my okay. Yeah. So I would say. Well, we still have twelve users that aren't. Better. Yes, I think a lot of are related to uh, difficulty with installation. Right. And one is in. Okay. Right. So, for the one that is the refusal, is it the same landowner? Do we expect that same, that same reaction when that person is approached again? And if so, what a, I mean, what are our options in that event? Yeah, I think if it's um, a refusal, then they would still continue to pay the uh, two times three. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, unless we want to uh, review that the rate and increase the potential. So, just so that we're clear, they're paying three times three times an average rate now, that one house for the refusal. Okay, so really what we're looking at is if it's the same landowner in that case and they refuse us again, we're looking at 11 owners, really not 12, correct? Uh, I believe it's. Uh, we'll, we'll yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I, I'm the same one. Well, certainly haven't refused a meter. It was just determined at the time of installation. Right? But not at the time. It would be, it would be a, 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 a substantial cost. Uh, so that's why it's increasing the rough average consumption uh, per month and then increase the uh, the the per month just just to compensate the other you know, average years or over time we we were to capture Councilor Marta, uh, to the mayor, thank you for the CEO for to this table. So we've had these eleven people, but we were unable to do it before. Do we expect that something has changed that we're going to be able to do it now? To the chair, um, we may go in there and nothing has changed. We may go in there and uh, get the contract. We need to be able to find the options and get some dollars. So. Here's the you can come back and report this is not changing, so we'll be very confident that it's going to be installed, or maybe not. So, we'll be through the chair, we'll be looking at a different contract, or the same one we're looking I'm not, I'm not, I, through the chair, I don't know who the original contractor but I did that in 2012, but um, we'll reach out and have them reach out to the contract. It would be a different contract that was in a sort of universal program. But it's not on board to the house production. But at the time, it's a day and a half, it's a contract in which I'll be proposing to my wife that we're not going to do the final work. Perfect. No, I, I think uh, you know, I think the first step that we talked about is it makes sense to me that uh, everybody just look at getting the price and see what it costs anyway. So we have to see that. And then if that doesn't work out, then obviously then it's one of the other options. Right? <coughs> yeah. I was gonna say I was, I was gonna ask when when it was last done, like 2012. So uh, you know things have changed technology wise and might work, but maybe not that much, but a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, so we're moved because we're seconding. I don't see anybody rushing to get in for more conversation. So then, um, so it was uh, option three, correct? Yeah. So I'll just read it so that everybody understands. Again, direct staff to schedule a private con contract with the reassess. Residential properties currently being invoiced under, under meter rates and cover this expense under the Cardinal Water Systems Operations budget and two, Direct staff to provide council a report on the inspection findings once completed. Everybody good with that? It's been moved and seconded. All the conversation, all there. Okay. All right. All right. So, procurement policy. <laughs> so, 
Sorry, I had to rush my hand. Rush my right hand, so. <laughs> Introduce it, but uh, you, you will notice that this particular stage is uh, for the information discussion uh, item. There is no recommendation. What we wanted to do was at least highlight a few of the uh, changes from the 2015 uh, policy to the 2023 policy. It was just at a very high level. Um, the new policy, uh, section one, is new, and it's just basically indicating the, uh, the legislative authority uh, to um, put the new curriculum policy in place. Section two just uh, gives a little bit of a purpose and, and scope uh, around the policy. Uh, section 3.1, which is a little Um, which would be page 153 of 172. So 3 uh, and plus 3.1 would be the new clause. Section 3.2 would be the new is the new clause. Section four definitions. Uh, the original policy did not have definitions. It was worthwhile to uh, put a definition section in. Um, section five, so it was plus 5.5 5 on page 158. This is just sort of expanding the, the original curriculum policy uh, talked about um, sort of municipal departments uh, coming together to, 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 to try to get better prices and get the product. That's just sort of um, expanding it out where there, there are circumstances where we may be able to uh, partner with the township of Preston, the town of Prescott, and uh, other uh, municipalities uh, within the city of Improving the, uh, the, the, the purchase of uh, in, in the various particular items. Um, section plus uh, six point one five. So just want to spend just a little bit. That was denoted in the uh, sort sort of in the uh, information item. Um, working not, not number one to uh, look at the uh, increase in the, uh, the limit from, from 50,000 to, to 75,000. But also looking at some of those, what we would call annual routine uh, tenders that relate each year, that uh, typically we may find ourselves uh, above that uh, limit. That so long as there is the approved uh, budget at the start of the year, that those items will be able to be uh, approved at the staff level and then uh, a report brought back to them. So, indicating the uh, sort of the tender results and who the, uh, who the award went to. Um, a good example right now is the zone taxing tender uh, is out and closes tomorrow. It may be difficult when we reach the uh, end of the month uh, for, for for awarding uh, to get that to get that work completed. Where if it was uh, if, it, if it was within that budget amount in twenty twenty three, we would be able to proceed with that and you know, uh, bring that report to council and get it to the budget. So that's uh, that's a those real I, I would say for the most part. That, that clause sort of summarizes the, the, the two big changes. Clause six point one eight uh, has the um, addition of the, the, the single source uh, the location of tenders where goods and services are in short supply and market conditions. We certainly found uh, some some issues. Very limit with respect to uh, 
the wise and sure of order, would have been valuable to the community that we proceed with some of the purchases. We'll move to the main uh, insert and the next one. On occasion, when we do receive only one bid, that would be the we would be able to proceed based on that one bid because we automatically can get that bid for the for the year. That's just a sort of a high level uh, overview of the uh, on many of the uh, the changes that are brought forth in this procurement policy, and uh, they do not. Thank you to the CAO. All right. So, discussion on the changes. Who wants to start? Go ahead. No, I mean, it makes, you know, it, it's, you know, it's been at 50,000 for a while. It makes sense that with inflation and everything else, that the need to increase that makes sense. And uh, uh, a lot of the things you've worked on here are, are similar to what I see in the, uh, in, you know, in, 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 in my job, if you want my day job, I should say. And, uh, uh, nothing there is a real surprise. Um, the only question I have when it says CAO or is it CAO or treasurer or is it CAO and treasurer have to sign for uh, is it like a two signature system you have to have for payment or is it what are they um, for, uh, for which, uh, oh sorry for uh, for the thirty thousand well I guess for for the thirty thousand for the five thousand for that for, for that amount it, it can be the uh, the CAO or the treasurer for payment. Typically, it's it, it, it's done uh, by by both. It would just be in those circumstances where either I, I was the one who had to do this, and I think it would be the one. Okay, thank you, Councilor Smith. Uh, I just have one question. Um, when, when you're saying fifty thousand dollars for zoning approval, how many times can they do that in a year? Then? Can you spend a whole bunch of different investors and spend fifty thousand dollars that occur? So uh, through the uh, through, through through the mayor, it would only be uh, in circumstances where that budget amount was was approved. So um probably not as easy because now it's the uh, person seems to be all over the yeah. The fifty thousand dollars, but typically it was less person a year. Uh, would have would have would have been in the round of forty thousand threshold. As long as the budget was approved for that, it would be something that we can see it in the trade would have worked. Okay. Typically, it's not that much of a problem. Thank you. Lately, I would say in the last few years, that that would be something that would be. Uh, and then you can come to the committee with council for council. Good. Good. Uh, yes, I just have so that include an example of vehicle. Uh, we want to go electric, but we want to go hybrid, and the vehicle comes up four by four for 50,000. Could that be purchased without? I can say vehicles on that example. If we want to try to try to run I would I would I would say to the to the mayor if that would certainly lend the you know, budgeted item with respect to the to a vehicle. So if it came in within that threshold, it would be something that could uh, certainly be perceived. Um whatever what I would what what I would um Suggest is that if, if there is a direction with respect to um, look, looking at um, uh, hybrid or electric vehicles, that uh, we, we, we look at establishing policy uh, with respect to that. We can make use of that. But as part of an overall plan uh, action. So that's not a one off and it's that, that would be more of a policy direction at least from what they do. So uh, I'll jump in for one sec. So so we we're looking at a at a at a so if we budget if we're saying we budget fifty five thousand then for for dust suppressant and it comes in at anything under seventy five thousand 
it doesn't need to come back to council. Is that what we're? Is that the implication of this? You know, that's a good, that's a good example. We budgeted fifty-five thousand for that's the Seventy thousand, and then people you would you would not have that authority because it's not within the approved budget. So it would need to come back. So if we gave fifty for a new vehicle purchase, it would have to come back if it was fifty thousand and one. So um, if it was if, if it was uh, fifty thousand in one before uh, HSD. Well, typically, typically those prices are prior to or, or before the testing. Okay, so explain then to to me or to the committee then exactly what the what the difference actually is then. Why are we going from fifty to seventy five? Um, I would I, I would say in in a number of circumstances, um, such as that's the person and and probably two others. What we're finding is that they are um, typically now over that fifty thousand threshold. And it, to me, it's it, it, it's an annual item that has been reviewed during during budget time. But we're going to spend X dollars to go into that uh, particular item. So as long as it was, comes in with that with, with that amount, I think the thought process is that it can be uh, approved to to, to uh, prevent any. You know, the delay, and it's, it's going to be reported to the committee and council when they want to find on on when they will take that tender and uh, what that what that cost. I'm not quite sure I understand. So, so like uh, in the 2024 budget, mm -hmm. um, are you sent saying that anything under seventy five thousand wouldn't require council approval? I would say that anything under 75,000 wasn't already approved by council in that budget budget would not require a second council approval unless it was a capital approval. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, if I understand this correctly, right. so let's go back to the truck. If we budgeted, let's just say it was fifty eight thousand dollars for the truck, okay? Um, and we didn't during the budget process specify more than an electric vehicle or anything like that. Did we? I think we could have that direction given as well. That's the time that was going to. Um, so it came in fifty five or six fifty six thousand or something like that. It would not have had to have come back here. But if we didn't budget for a truck at all and we had fifty six thousand dollars to stay the same price, we would have had to discuss it here because it wasn't part of the budget. Yeah, if we're if we're using the truck example, let's go let's let's use the ones that are yes. person let's be lucky to are uh uh assume completely cost of of fifty thousand. So if we're if if we're not if we if if our budget was for a vehicle and the budget was five thousand and uh, the price came in fifty three thousand we would be we would we would be back to the committee uh, uh to the committee and council people because it's it's over that fifty thousand threshold. So if it came in at forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars, uh, it would be within the delegated authority of the CEO to approve that. It's within it's within budget and it's within that delegated authority. If that clarifies me, yeah. I mean, oh, okay. No, I mean. I'm still so, trying to get confused. So, so if we if in budgeting, if we do fifty five, let's say, uh, or for dust suppressing, and in, in budget, okay, and, and it's going to be sixty, 
and we change this number to 75, does it have to come back to us again, or is that put it within delegated authority? It does not put it under within delegated authority because it's over the budget. We only we, we, we only we council only approved fifty five thousand. So what's it going to commit sixty thousand? It's it's it, 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 it's outside the delegated authority because it's it, it's not under approved by so what it, it requires council approval. What's an instance that it would so the seventy that the seventy five is why? Give me a, a rock solid clear example of why we would do this. So, that, uh, so we budgeted uh, dust suppression for um, 65000 and dust suppression came in at 63000 we, 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 we would not come back for extension approval. So it fits within budget. It, 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 it fits within budget, and it, and it would be within the same yeah. authority. The same for road patching. Then. And, and then it would just be a report provided to the committee that we awarded yeah. dust suppression to. Yeah. Then down the in the in the other seven. So years. so if we, if we budget seventy thousand dollars for for road crack sealing and and patching work, anything that's under seventy five or anything that's under that budgeted number, up to up to the number is fine. Uh, yeah. So okay. so if we budget if we budgeted. Yeah. Seventy thousand yeah. 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 for yeah. for for, so, for, yeah. for uh, actual patching okay. as long as it's within. Uh, at seventy thousand or less, and the delegated authority was seventy five thousand. It would just be approved at, at the CAO. And there's no right because it's already been approved in the budget. Because it's already been approved in the budget right. and it's within the delegated authority. And there's nowhere outside of that that we we would see an expenditure of seventy five thousand dollars or less without it coming to us. Like if it was approved, we would see everything that's approved in the budget. I'm talking about something that's outside of that. If it, if it, if it's outside the, the, the approved budget, it, it is required to come back. Is there a number that it's not? No, 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 no. That's changing? Like, are we changing the number that it's not required to come back? No, we're, we're, we're just, we're, what you'd be changing is the is the upset and limit of the of the delegated authority, but all all other all other circumstances have to be in place, right? It had to have been an approved budget item. It had to it had to come in on budget and lower in order for that to, to, to proceed. If it's outside of that that, that area, then it would be back to the committee as well. Okay. So I don't want to be sitting up here and look like an idiot tonight. I'd rather look like an idiot tonight. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I, I think it's good to make it good to have that clarity. That's why. That's why we didn't. That's why we didn't want to bring forward <laughs> the recommendation first off because it's a, it's a very important policy. But we're, we're looking at areas where it, it, it may be. Uh, some efficiencies operationally wise if we don't have to delay um, uh, several weeks or, or have to follow steps at council meeting to get a, a, a approval on an item so that we get we give sufficient window for the contractor to complete that work. Okay. That's just that, that's what it, it really does is speed things up with, with keeping that same uh, control mechanism. Now can I just ask you <laughs> so we have a 75,000 limit. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Pro dust proposed, proposed, yeah, yeah. proposed. Okay, so and and we have it uh, for the dust suppression at seventy seven. It comes in at seventy nine. It's got to come back to Canada. Yeah, it, it, it needs to go back. It's got to come back. It needs to come back to committee it's or over budget. I should say yeah. committee or council because depending depending on that timing, we may want to go yes. directly to council. Yeah, yeah. Or, that's right, but it's because it's over the but 75 it's and over budget. Over the, the, the approved budget. Right. Okay. So, so um, we, 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 we were focused quite often on the 30 to 75 pay one. So, on the under 30,000, the 5,000 to 30,000 one, for instance, uh, where, you know, let's just say a department would just approve a certain amount of dollars for 
for, for spend, uh, that can be spent up to thirty thousand. Uh, let's just say something comes up that you know wasn't really planned, but the fact is we just have a dollar value in each of the apartments. So that thirty thousand can be in, in, incurred, um, and obviously it's the department head responsibility to figure out how they can either save that money on something else or balance things or bring back way more money. So it's, it's that true statement. It's only when they exceed that budget where they would have to come back in. Well, I so so with re, so so with respect to to, to, to a, a department, it, like typically, if there's and, and what we found is is, is like there's been a number of uh, of, of projects that uh, that, that the quotes have come back like twenty one thousand, twenty two thousand in, 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 in that range, and then it's like. The department, the, the department has not had that authority to approve that. It needs to go to the treasurer or the CAO for, 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 for approval, and, and, and it's the same mechanism, right? If, if, if you had budgeted for them now and, and, and then within that amount, it just it just makes sense for the department to proceed in that direction. If it was $2,000 less, they would have. It just it, it just seems there's a number of those items that are that, that, that are coming in and, and, and then executing those those, those agreements now all of a sudden you're you're you're, you're needing action. so it's just really the, the same protection mechanisms are, are, are in place that would exist at, at 20,000 50,000 you're just moving that that limit from the 30 and but the same, the, the same protection that we see. If that makes sense, if that makes sense. Don't have anything? We'll see those numbers for our budget anyways. We'll know what the dollar values are that, that we're being asked to approve. Uh, it doesn't mean that there's going to be any further spending. We're going to have to approve those those numbers uh, at all anyways, right? So yeah, through the through the so the uh, yes, but through 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 the budget deliberations, those numbers are set, yeah. and then yeah. but it doesn't increase any of those. So any so any project that's a, that's a, that's a lot of that. Seventy-five thousand uh, threshold is going to be as going to need to come back for for additional things. Just now, getting those what we like. I I I get that you know fifty to seventy thousand sounds like a lot, but there there's a really uh, small scope compared to what our overall budget is, and if, if we can we can speed that up, we are not having to we we have to wait for. Um, the department is not waiting for the, uh, the CAO for a few days to get the time to actually get the letters on and everything. We can just do that, make that approval on, on the units that, that are already been approved. In. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think the only other question I would have, and I think maybe you touched on it a little bit earlier, um, we have certainly uh, indicated over the last little bit that we would like, like piggyback if possible. On you know on our neighbors or United counties or to piggyback it if it you know at least gives us the option to possibly procure the less is there something in this policy 
that that suggests that we piggyback first or or that we look at those avenues so that we don't have to give special direction or separate direction during budget or during anything else that we just know that it's already being done. So if we look at page 158, it indicates that we participate in one for the first thing, but really, really what is it, what that appears is to be a little clearer with respect to um, uh, the staff that that ability exists and we think that we should be exploring that when, when it's possible. Yeah. The keyword being main, right? Correct. It is main, but uh, as it was prior, you know, we, the, the point that we also did not actually um, provide any indication with, with, with respect to block list or anything, but we, we, we know that we have. Uh, for, for for instance, a couple of examples that I can think of is with the uh, with the nature uh, soil that we went through the, the, the in part with the community and that was the terrain to get that to get that crossing. There really is nothing within the existing procurement policy that would even be signal that that's a, that that's an option we're we're we're, we're proceeding in some of those in some of those directions now and we think it provides the, the cause that we just want to have that back in the next next you know, this, this is something that you know that you know, the council will be looking to oversee for the next with respect to uh, to efficient well not only for us but maybe it helps our neighbors as well right right Okay, those are mine. Anyone else? They're looking <laughs> All right, so information, correct? Not not actually, uh, is there an action? There's no action on this one, right? Information only? We'll see it again. Or do we want to move yeah. it? We move it. I, I, I would, you know, we want to see this if, again, if, if, there's, if, there's, if there's comfort level with the document that is presented, which those are my questions. Here, like, if, like if here to be the case, and there would be certainly nothing to prevent the committee from, from making a motion to give this uh, opportunity to make a recommended council and not some procurement policy that the changes are uh, presented. Sure. And there were there were no changes to what's here. Everybody was comfortable with what was here once everything was explained, correct? Yeah. Okay. Can I make that motion? Uh, that we accept the you want to wordsmith this for me? <laughs> I'm looking to the clerk. Just to let, uh, let the clerk read something else. Um, we'll continue that we recommend to council adopt the policy as How's that sound? Well, so for the one I'm going to say, moved by Councilor Martel, seconded by Councilor Smale. Is there further discussion on that recommendation? Hearing none, then, all in favor of that motion? Good. Okay. There we go. Just be our government. Okay. Uh, <laughs> blinding. Uh, all right. AED fire department disposal disposal of surplus goods. Did you get? Did you get it? Did you yeah, it? I did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's on page one seventy two in the package for anybody who doesn't have it. My key. I'm sorry. Mine keeps freezing still. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get down there. There we go. All right. So there's a recommendation, and that's and I'm going to read the recommendation. I'll ask somebody to move it, second it, and then we can discuss it once it's on on the floor. So that committee recommend that council declare the above mentioned item as surplus to the needs of the township and authorize staff to dispose of the item through govdeals.com. So um just go ahead. Well, that, that's the recommendation. We, we can discuss it before. If you're more comfortable discussing it. You want to discuss it? I, I just have one question. Did, is that the one that we always use as a government one, or did we leave use the local one? Um, like for those yeah. pumps that we sold and so on and so forth. Uh, Sorry. No, not, not, not at all. Uh, we, had, uh, we, we had utilized uh, just the uh, 
I think there's sufficient for in certain cases that have not resulted in that. We went uh, and used uh, the local public option. Uh, that delivered some uh, reasonable results, but I think that what we found is that a vast majority of the people that think about the most people are to um, public story. The, the 1996 fire began. Yeah, there was some Yeah, to government? Yes. Oh. So, so there are, the, the, the feeling is that we have probably the ability to get past the Thank you. Uh, I think uh, I want to ask a question. What? So, mm -hmm. why is it? Surplus to our needs. So, tanker tanker two was what was replaced with the needs that was purchased last year and it's about the surplus. There's no need for this for any other purpose, like township purpose. Uh, there 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 was some. Uh, consideration uh, given to um, potentially having uh, the utilized by public works with respect to uh, extending the system of the road, and the road. Uh, the, the difficulty is that the particular need is not, uh, not um, a PPO, so, so it's not a driving mode. So it's either, it's either it's it's either yeah. you're in drive mode or you're in pump mode. You don't have the ability to drive in both at the same time, okay. so it doesn't. It it, 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 it it most likely doesn't deliver uh, what, what's needed because you would have to you 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 would have to look at mm -hmm. either um, uh, convert it to 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 PPO. That's even possible. And I, I do forget my 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 ignorance on whether that's I suspect it's it's likely possible. It's just not. So I think in that particular sense, I don't see that there's any uh, use to add to the ZFI. Is it from a fire perspective, we bought another one. It's out, like it's, it, it's no, I get it's surplus, but is it, it's still usable? Like it, I think there's another fire department that's in use. There's a certain where um, unlikely that there will be another fire department in Ontario who would, um, who would purchase it to use it with respect to uh, the, 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 simply the age of the unit. It's you would you would have to get that um, retrofitted and and, and have it passed to uh, to the uh, standard. It's unlikely that. Uh, uh, that would be the case in, in, in this province. Um, there are provinces in the east that don't have that same thing, but potentially there may be there, there may be um, in the east that may want to purchase that. I mean, that, that may be their last question. I mean, I promise. Unit. Is is the it's a two thousand freight liner? We had problems. We had to replace a motor on another. Um, uh, dump truck. I know we had problems with one of the fire department vehicles that had the same motor as the public works trucks that we had the motor problems with. Is this the same motor? Um, I think that was the same. Uh, same That's gas. Like, this is gas. Yeah. Okay. You know, but, 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 it's, but it's no, it's an older model. I, I just can't remember the date when the uh, those engine models uh, switch. switch. But, yeah, I'm just thinking back to that one that had the coolant and the oil issue. And and if this is the same motor and it hasn't had those issues, it might might be worth a lot of people. That's all I was, that's where I was going with it. But. Okay. I would say the storage would be uh, 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 to the mayor and to the mayor's point. Do we have any idea what kind of value we're talking about here? Um, I think it's, 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 it's,
I thought the recipe. You talk about other than shuttling and and very done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just sorry. Are we able to put a reserve on that? Which is which is an Airs point if you need a, an engine or a part somewhere. We don't want to sell this thing for like five grand. And you can say it's yeah. Okay. 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 Asking because I once bought a fully functional truck, fire truck that I really wanted for like 1200 bucks. I was going to do it. I believe it's going to be put in oil paper. But it's actually used that particular type of search for me. But I do believe that you can be put in an available bid with respect to that. But but I'm not 100 sure. That, that I think Last question. Um, refresh my memory. What when we get the 25? This will get 25 for it. Um, <laughs> when we get the 25 for it, where does the 25 go? Within the within the fire department. If I get it, I believe there was a value. I'm going to say. It's probably in the realm of 15,000 as a sort of budget as we said. Anticipating, anticipating that with that, uh, in, in, in the right of the side. In the right of the side, I'm going to file the right of the side. I think we're going to go a little bit lower because it's the reality is not, not 100%. Okay, good enough. Certainly should be uh, more than that. All right, I read the recommendation. I don't think I had a mover in the second, if I were correct. Anyone else want to weigh in before we move along? Those plays. All right. So then, uh, that committee recommend that council declare the above mentioned item as surplus to the needs of the town for the non-fire staff and dispose of the item through GovDeals.com. Um, can I have a mover? Moved by Councilor Ward, seconder. Uh, Councilor Smale, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. Good. Uh, Councilor notices. Or, excuse me, Council Inquiries Notice Motion. Anyone have inquiries or notices motion? I have one inquiry if I may. Yes. Uh, through the management CAO, I've had a request this week for a, a letter concerning crosswalks across the number two highway on the north side of town. So I've had this brought up in letters to residents before. I'm just wondering why all the we came in and finishing off that section would now be a a time I'm assuming that's a county road we'd have to involve the county but it seems like it would be an optimum time to you know put up a crosswalk in one of those ponds or along the cross on that road make it a little safer for residents. Is that something you might be able to to talk to the county about so it's feasible? Um, through, through the mayor, we, we, we could certainly raise that uh, to the uh to the community and um, and, and If I may, am I correct in assuming that would have to be a county thing, or can we just go ahead and say we want to crosswalk here? We need to crosswalk. So I just want to remember that, that this is inquiry, is not really a discussion, right? We don't want to turn this into a into a discussion. If we want it as an item for a further committee, then I I would ask that that we do that. I think you know the inquiry. I think you can contact the county and 
really going to move for that. No, I'm going to the other one. I'm going to see what we discussion. Um, further inquiries or not? I, I just have a big cheddar for our recreation uh, staff. Oh, 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 oh. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Central Fair. Well done. Uh, I saw them working hard for the top row for organizing. Everything was down to uh, all professional uh, update from them. And it was nice to see, I think, the public works ended up coming up today and helping them too, didn't they? I met them on, on, on the Hudson Road. So please send my Chris and or Mike, please send my thank yous to mm -hmm. the staff. For parties for cancer. Thank you. Any further? No. Hearing none. Then uh, no real mayor's report. Just I want to echo that that um, you know that that comment. I attended the fair and Labor Day, and um, for what seems like one endless long week. Um, I can't imagine what it's like. Big guys trying to close schools, open arenas. Run bass tournaments. I thought with with all of the you know the things that that we did uh, with um, you know the festival committee with Labor Day and and uh, Spencer Welfare. So just compliments to staff. You guys are doing a knockout job. I think for you know everything's fantastic, and I think as a group we're over overjoyed with the work that everyone's making. Pass that along. I think that's it for for mayor. I guess I I should I should. Um, I want to just say, you know, congratulations to to the fair board and um, to Eric and and all of the the volunteers, all of the the residents that came out, all of the help that came out. Again, to staff. Um, certainly, when when I was in Spencerville all weekend, uh, even in the rain on Sunday, um, the town was was full. It was booming, and and I've said this before. I'll say it again that. That while the fair does well, but everyone, everyone does well uh, that weekend. All the businesses of Spencerville in the area certainly benefit from having having the fair there, and uh, and it really shows in how full that main street and how how active and how busy that entire area uh, is. So so well done to to the group and well done to all the volunteers. Okay, so question period. There's no one here for question period. Um, Post session, does somebody have the um, the uh, motion to move into closed session? That's what I go. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen Robar that the municipal council proceeds into closed session at 842 in order to address the matter pertaining to A section 239. To read personnel matters that are identical, identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically succession planning, recreation, public works, and environmental services. B, section 239 2C, acquisition and disposition of land by the municipality or local board, specifically buyer owned property, and minutes of closed session dated July 10, 2023. Thank you. Uh, before we before I call the vote on that, I I will uh, will say that once I call the vote on it, we'll take a five minute uh, uh, break so that um, anyone that needs to clear the room can clear the room. Um, I will note again that we'll come out of, of closed session so that the deputy deputy and I can uh, leave uh, before we discuss uh, item 12, 12 So. Um, I guess I call the question, correct? Yeah, then all in favor proceeding into closed session. Good. And then so we'll take a five minute break. It's okay, I'll write it. Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen Nilbaugh that the closed meeting of the municipal council does now adjourn and the open meeting does now resume at 7 30 at 9 37 p.m okay just so uh so for the the clerk just to note that the deputy mayor and and the mayor are both uh leaving the table before uh the discussion goes back into close to discuss uh item 12. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Safe travel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Just the camera a little bit. Uh, I my uh, John Rendell, cited by uh, myself, that the municipal council will proceed into closed session at 9.38 in order to address the matter pertaining to, bring down the time here, uh, A, Sicto, B, yeah, just B. Oh, just 12 B, yeah, sorry, pardon me. Section 2932C, acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, specifically buyer's road property and minutes of close session dated July 10th, 2023. Moved by myself, seconded by uh, Councillor Ron Smale, that the closed meeting in Municipal Council does now adjourn and open meeting does resume at 9.51 p.m. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll report out and then we'll talk about the minutes. Okay, so, uh, um, so during closed session, as reporting out, um, uh, we, we discussed, uh, with, uh, with the mayor and deputy mayor present as well, 239, number 12A, section 239-2B, uh, we discussed personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal and local board of families specifically succession planning, recreation, public works and environmental services, and direction was given to the CAO. Um, then we returned obviously, and, and uh, the mayor and deputy mayor stepped out, and then we went back into closed session and discussed 12B uh, with Councillor uh, Smale, Councillor Martel, and myself. Um, in 239-2-C, uh, we uh, discussed a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, specifically Byers Road property um, and direction was given to the CAO. And we also discussed uh, minutes from the closed session dated July 10th, 2023. All right. Good. And we have a little bit of the minutes, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, no, sorry, that's sorry. Yeah, we have a move in, move by. Oh, yeah, okay, by okay. yeah, okay. move in, uh, move by myself, Councilor Smale, and seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor Steve Villabon, that the Missile Council received and approved the post session minutes okay. dated. Yeah, it was, we, we discussed it with Councilor Martel. Just like there we go. Uh, seconded by uh, Councilor Bill Martel, uh, the Municipal Council receives and approves the post session minutes dated July 10th, 2023. Okay, uh, that's good. Okay, so um, moving on to uh, number 13, a, uh, a uh, non negotiable, non uh, negotiable uh, motion for adjournment. Uh, and who was that? That was actually right here. Uh, and that was moved by your Councillor Taylor? Uh, moved by myself and uh, seconded by mm -hmm. Councillor Joe Martel. The Municipal Council does adjourn at what time is Joe? 58 is what I'm 9 58 p.m. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. All in favor? Perfect. You got to adjourn. Thank you. Well, Jimmy Buffett's thing, right? It's 9.58. So. Yeah, we can take all this down.